Okay, I'm going to call this plan commission meeting for May 13th, 2019 to order. Roll call, please. Kevin, do you have a roll call? You got it. Uh, Chris Zellner. Here. Sue Springman. Here. Joe Zitzelberg. Here. Brad Zeman. Here. Brian Mollock. Brian <coughs> Here. Wallace. Here. Here. So I'll just first off say welcome to Brian here. Wallace. He's our new member on plan commission. Oh, thank you. So welcome. Uh, all right. Let's go to minutes. Look for approval of minutes from last meeting. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Motion by Brad, second by Chris. Any other comments? Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda. Ayes have it. Public comments. Is there anyone here who would like to make a comment on an item that's not on the agenda for this evening? I have one registered. Uh, Ann Lewandowski. Oh, now I can see your face. I, heard, I saw a hand. document that came out it does not match the date um, and the ordinance <coughs> change document that was proposed in April this created some confusion that there was not a revised date with the red line that went along with that and there were also multiple changes across the document that did not just refer to the parking standards which are the item agenda item as there was some frustration from this body last year about people getting upset by the ordinance changes, I would encourage you to create some context so that people understand what you're doing and hopefully include staff comments when the strike change and red line changes are made. And please include revised dates on your documents. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Uh, all the other ones are related to public hearing and, yeah, public hearings. Okay, thank you. All right, next on the agenda, we have our consent agenda. <coughs> Look for a motion on that. Make the motion. Motion by Brad Zeman. Second. Second by Brad Mallet. Any other comments? Public question, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Presentations, presentation of downtown parking study. I'm going to walk you through this, Chris. I, in fact, uh, I wasn't planning on spending a lot of time on it tonight because we got a pretty full agenda. I wanted to get the report in front of the commission. Uh, this was prepared with a, a graduate student through the UW. So, and then I did also did have uh, Jason, our planner, review it. So I, what I'd like to do is just walk you through it, uh, and then we'll set up a our process for going forward on how we're going to get take comments from you and or the, the public in terms of before we take action on it. Okay. So this was uh, um, the scope of work. It really was, and, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but really our, our, my goal was to get a good inventory of the parking stalls that are in downtown, the on-street parking, the off-street parking, the public, the public parking lots, as well as the uh, private parking lots. And then mm -hmm complete inventory or, or status of, of those or actually doing counts during certain time periods to see what the utilization are of what those parking stalls. <coughs> so on 15 separate occasions he went out there and took uh, an inventory of the parking stalls of, of all the private, the public, the on street. Uh, I think we went overboard in terms of what uh, a typical consultant would do but I thought mm -hmm. it'd be better to get good information since uh, our cost for getting the, the counts wasn't that expensive. I tried to pick up during the week, the lunch hours, and then uh, the evening and dinner hours. I, I think the conclusion was, was pretty clear in terms of uh, the utilization of our parking and <coughs> that uh, we never were over that uh, threshold of, of a, as an average of over 60%. Uh, I think uh, if you look at some of the numbers that he put together, um, the available amount of parking that was available uh, always exceeded the parking that was um, that was in demand. So in, in doing putting this report together, uh, it's all done through GPS. So every single parking spot has its individual character in terms of its uh, 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 data point that actually he then was able to so if at, at a given time, on any one of those 15 occasions, we can tell you what parking stall was occupied and which one was, was vacant. 
So on average, the, the on-street parking was, uh, was utilization was around, you know, 12%, 13%. The off-street, 28%. You know, the highest rate uh, was in was a noon hour uh, on Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, we did solicit community feedback uh, through a survey uh, question. We had 160 responses that were recorded. Uh, we had a number of comments. <coughs> I think the key findings uh, from the feedback was that uh, the 100 East Main Street is, is the most visited. 88% um, of the respondents could find parking within three minutes. All of them could find parking within five minutes. 72% um, think that the afternoon parking is the hardest time to park. And 86% uh, uh, respond typically park less than, than two hours. And we're getting a little bit. All right. Hard to do a PowerPoint without that. So uh, even later in the, in the agenda, we're going to be talking uh, amendments to our parking standards, uh, <clears throat> maybe lessening those standards for, for certain circumstances. And as an example, uh, the Lamp House Apartments in the public library, if you look at the, what would be the standard according to the ITE, which is the, the transportation standard, um, it would only have required 287, but our ordinance required uh, 387. In conclusion, uh, I don't think we have a major parking problem in our downtown. We certainly hit the peaks at, at times. Uh, I think that our utilization is, is less. I think it was evident in the survey that we got back that, that they all could find parking within five minutes and that 80-some percent could find it within three minutes and that uh, the under, underutilized on-street parking could be used <coughs> to alleviate some of the parking pressures of new development. I also think there's other, um, you know, uh, considerations. We can, you know, the parking directory would help be helpful. We've talked about the St. John's property as being allowed to be used for a overflow parking, which uh, by agreement, it, the developers agreement, it is allowed to be used. We just haven't finalized that agreement, so that is something that I think we can pursue. Uh, one other thing we could look at is uh, requiring paid parking. That certainly would turn over a number of sports. Uh, our enforcement is, is rather limited at this time, so maybe that's something we could look at in the future. Right now, I don't think the police department has the personnel to enforce uh, uh, <coughs> extensive parking restrictions. And then to continue to, to communicate with the business, discuss parking issues and, and concerns. So that's it. Uh, so I just wanted to get it in your hands, give you guys some time to congest, uh, you know, consume it, and then we can uh, put this on a future agenda for, for more uh, discussion for the Planning Commission and, and talk about a process and, and if you want to take some public input on it. Okay. All right, let's move on then. First item under new business, public hearing discuss an action on hy V specific implementation plan, known as SIP, and conditional use permit to exceed a maximum allowable building square footage in Woodland Crest development. I think, Chris, we'd first want to hear a presentation from the applicant, and then we can hold the public hearing. Perfect. <coughs> Project shrunk. <laughs> which, uh, I, I don't know what's going to be the best here. But probably getting up to like page 60. Landmark. 65? Yeah, go to 65. Somewhere in that range. Oh. That's it. I think oh. you lost your screen. Oh, okay. Then I'll see if that'll come back. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, good evening. My name is John Brem. I'm with Hy-Vee Incorporated. Uh, it's been it's been almost exactly a year since I've been in front of you. Um, I, I visited you uh, last time when we had the, the you had the planning and zoning meeting in the assisted living facility down in the basement. So it's good to be back and in front of you again with uh, roughly the same plan as we presented at that meeting. Um, what we're proposing to do here is uh, build. I'm just going to use round numbers: 58,000 square foot uh, grocery store. Uh, full service. Uh, last time uh, I was asked if this was a full service grocery store. Um, our typical flagship store is a 96,000 square foot store. This is a 60,000 square foot store. It still has all the products and services that we would offer at our biggest stores. <coughs> but um, like I explained it last time, last instead of having maybe 20 different kinds of uh, cheddar cheese, there might be 10 or 5 different kinds of cheddar cheese in an aisle. So um, the selection is a little bit limited, but all the same products and services are offered in this store as we would offer in any of the other stores, uh, the Westgate store or the, the Madison East store. Um, <coughs> uh, north of the site is uh, Woodland Drive. Uh, to the west, uh, Highway, County, or Highway uh, Q, and to the east, Simon Crestway, to the south, Sarah Lane. Uh, we're also proposing, uh, as, as I pr presented last time I was here, uh, 4,500 square foot uh, convenience store to the south side, um, actually to the southwest of the store. It complements um, the grocery store and is considered by us as to be uh, a part of the store. It'll also have a coffee shop in that store with a drive through. Um, when we last uh, met with city staff and last time we came before planning and zoning, uh, there were some items um, that we had uh, discussed. Um, one being um, there was an access on the far east of the C store that uh, um, emptied directly into Sarah Lane um, as we talked about this project and that became a concern for our traffic consultants. We removed that lane. Um, architecture was a concern prior um, on this project, uh, especially the rear <coughs> of the building. Um, we feel that it's nicely articulated and has good materials on the back. Um, it is a service area, so there's not so many windows, uh, but the compromise position there was that we would provide um, a large landscape berm, landscaped area berm um, to the east of the building uh, along the detention pond. Um, that is still in the plans. So everything you see in front of you uh, is essentially what we presented before, um, in addition to um, everything we agreed to uh, the last time we were in front of you. Um, we had new city comments, and Kevin, I don't know if you want to go through city. I'll go through them. Um, one one thing that the the city asked the city staff asked us to do was reduce our uh, number of parking stalls. Uh, right now, uh, the site that you have in front of you is parked at about seven cars per thousand square feet ratio, which is heavy. Uh, we like to have at least a 5.5 .5 per thousand uh, parking ratio, um, so. Uh, in order to uh, meet city comments uh, in, as far as landscaping and the parking ratio concerns, we, we're proposing that we remove 72 stalls and that will bring the parking ratio down uh, on this project to a 5.5 5 per thousand parking ratio. Uh, what we're proposing to do is remove the parking bays that you see uh, facing out towards Highway Q uh, to the west. Uh, both at the C store and in front of the grocery store. Uh, the, the parking stalls that are um, alongside the east side of the C store, kind of inside the parking lot, there's five there. And then the remainder of the parking stalls would come from um, the two strips that are uh, north and south of the store along the back. And we will... John, we <coughs> just for the crowd, so the crowd knows where you're referring to, because they might not know. We've got a red pointer if you want to just oh, point you do. those spots. Okay, great. I think we do. Red button. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, but I thought it would make sense. <coughs> so maybe right. you can talk about the parking and which one you're Yes. Doing. So in order to comply with the first set of staff comments um, and recommendations uh, reducing the parking, we're, we're proposing to remove all these parking stalls along this edge, Highway Q. Uh, there's a short bay of parking up here, some parking back here. 
And behind the wine and spirits, there's also a big bay of parking. We remove approximately half of that in the back. Those are areas we don't need. We like those for um, parking our employees, but uh, we can bring that down. We do request the 5.5 per thousand, though, just based on experience. We know we need that uh, just based on um, outdoor, outdoor seasonal sales that we have, take up some stalls. Uh, typically, a store this size will have anywhere from uh, three to 400 employees and anywhere from 75 to 100 of them in a given shift. Um, so those, all those folks need a place to park. Um, we have the, the vendors and then um, multiple. Uh, we, we also expect uh, to see an awful lot of uh, business during the peak hours, more, you know, the breakfast, the lunch, and, and the uh, uh, dinner hours. And we do see that at our other sites here in town. Um, if you want to move to architecture, the building elevations. <coughs> Let's see. So the, the architecture we're showing is, is what we uh, showed the last time we were in front of you. Um, uh, the recommendations are to have uh, sunscreens, vertical lattice work, um, awnings to bring human scale in. Um, these elements here, those are all awnings in the front to bring the scale of the building down in front. All the windows that you see on the front, those are all vision windows. So you can see into the store and out of the store. Uh, we have entrances. We have a patio, outside, outdoor patio here. There's an entr main entrance here, another entrance here entrance to the clinic here and an entrance to wine and spirits here um, so lots of storefront uh, type architecture along there um, north side of the building facing woodland has the patio all of this again is all vision glass these are offices back here um, this is all the wine and spirits department and the market grill right in here this is the back area that we talked about and roughly this entire stretch here would be screened uh, by, lands by massive landscape planting along that uh, wet east side. And then to the south, uh, this area, again, would be screened by some of that landscaping and some distance between that and Sarah Lane. And then, again, this is more vision glass into the building, and that's the, that's the wine and spirit side. Um, these areas... Uh, as far as materials go, materiality, this, there's a lot of different textures and colors going on here. It's, it's all earthy toned. But the band you see on the top, that is all uh, EFIS. Um, so that's, that's the part that we, um, that most cities typically have, may have an issue with. But we, we bring it way up high. It's a good material. Um, it's basically stucco. Uh, this area is an architectural precast. So those are concrete panels that are erected. Uh, but they're built in a factory, and um, <coughs> the, the top is washed after it gets to a certain uh, place in the curing process, and the aggregate is exposed to give that some character and some and some texture to it. And then all the red you're seeing here is brick. So uh, all high-quality materials, glass, brick, uh, architectural concrete, EFIS. Um Let's see. I think that that covers all the the major issues. The trash enclosure was another issue that was commented on in the in the staff comments. Uh, the trash enclosure will be uh, built with the same materials um, as the store and the C store. It'll be a brick masonry enclosure um, with steel doors. It's um, we usually make them just as nice as the the store itself. So it's a nice nice place. Doesn't look like it's actually a trash enclosure. Um, at this point, I guess I'd take any questions or comments you may have. So before, well, we're going to open up the public hearing before we do questions. Okay. So unless you have any comments before we open public hearing. I was going to ask Jason or Ed if they had any comments prior to the public hearing or if they want to wait till after. Well, I, I would like some additional clarification, okay. if I may. Go ahead. Um, I've asked numerous times, and the drawings that I've been reviewing are dated May 2018. So that's my first concern. So I'm having trouble comparing what you're proposing now to what you compared as you stated 
a while ago. Uh, your, your reading and the analysis and the comments about awnings and projections to create more shadow lines, uh, you had those elements on the storefront prior. Mm -hmm. There was no disagreement with that. The challenge is we've got Simon Crestway, which is an internal pedestrian street, and the solution that I'm hearing is we're going to landscape and berm this, we're going to landscape and berm that. The directive was to enhance the architecture, not the berm. Well, my so I don't see any changes on the east and the north elevation that were submitted before. Yeah, we did not make any changes. And that's uh, where, the, the, and that's where <laughs> the intent was to enhance those because they're extremely long buildings. You're connecting the high school down to Kilkenny Commons. <coughs> mm -hmm. It is a highly, it will be a highly pedestrianized zone yeah. versus cube. Yeah. So we, I have no problem with the storefront. It's the rest of the building that's a challenge. Well, uh, and then in terms of the landscaping and the parking, uh, I spoke with the landscape architect at JSD and Bill, and uh, part of the CUP, uh, yeah, the conditional use permit requires an increase of 1.5 of the landscaping and the points. And in my notes, you currently do not meet that. Okay. And so the upper corner and the entry, the gateway uh, landscape treatment of the intersection of Woodland and Kew, if you look at the, uh, if you look at this rendering, mm -hmm. you have to admit it's quite devoid of plant material. Yeah. Can we go to the planting plan? I'm sorry. Uh, Down a couple, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Right there. No, go to the plan. The, the, the actual plan, please. The actual plan. So I got a page number? Um, it should be C5. Right. There you go. Yeah. All right. <coughs> All right. La last year when we met, we, we discussed this, this same thing. And it was our understanding we came to an agreement that because of the nature of the service area behind the store, um, it's it's all trucks. We don't want pedestrians back there. Um, we understand <coughs> it's not the it's not the side of the store that is meant exactly for viewing. Um, there's really not an opportunity to articulate that side of the building. Right. What we have done is <coughs> use materials, pilasters, those items to create the the interest on the building itself. However, we t we talked about adding a curb here and putting some kind of green screen or lattice work up alongside the building. Um, we, we took a look at it and really, um, if you remember from our discussion, that, that becomes a problem area for maintenance. You've got trucks in that area banging into it. Um, the heat island effect back there is gonna make it very difficult to grow anything on the side of the building. Um, our understanding was the compromise permit, uh, position was to build this really dense landscape screen along there in order to break up that base and cover up any any trucks. And that was our understanding of the agreement at that time. Um, and and it, the rest of the building, um, <coughs> the north facing Woodland Drive has the articulation that you've described. The front obviously has the articulation. The back, uh, we make up that articulation. Um, it, you can't see it in plan view, but it's, you know, it's bricks, it's different materials um, to create that interest and bring that up. Uh, and then as far as the landscaping requirement goes, we agree we'll add some more landscaping to this. Um, what we couldn't do is add uh, a lot of landscaping here or up in this area because there's an easement there uh, for, for utilities and the storm water system. However, by removing these parking stalls here, we can create a dense landscape in front of the parking lot now. And we can do the same over here and the same back here as well. Um, and so we will comply with that and bring the uh, landscape density up. And, and you need to be cognizant of the fact that I'm not talking about the pedestrian experience standing in the loading dock looking at the building. I'm talking about the pedestrian experience along a street that has sidewalks on both sides. Right. And, and, and the potential future, um, whether they're offices or residential units. And, and we'd prefer to, <coughs> to make that experience more like a walk in the woods rather than walking along or the, an the urban side street. of the service area. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. 
Do you have anything to Jason? Yeah, I would, uh, just to follow up on the parking, I appreciate the indication that uh, you're planning to reduce the, the, the total um, amount of spaces. Um, can you clarify, you said uh, to 5.5, was that uh, against the net square footage or against the gross square footage? Uh, that would be against the gross square footage. Uh, right now, the, the total parking count on the entire site, the C store and the store, is uh, 410 stalls. We would be reducing it to 338 stalls. Um, I th that's that's the the two sites, the, the right. whole site. Yeah, yeah, that's the entire um, site. <clears throat> of the three stores in the in the region, um, it's a little bit hard to ask this question of either the the Madison East store. Or, or the Madison West store because both of them have other parking areas around them that kind of flex, mm -hmm. uh, including the Madison East store has just a big kind of unutilized open area. Mm -hmm. But the Fitchburg store has um, about 4.3 spaces per, right. per gross square footage. Um, have there been any problems with the Fitchburg store? <coughs> now, the Fitchburg store uh, occasionally runs into the issue where they don't have enough stalls. Um, I couldn't put, give you an exact number, but we have had complaints that there are times of the year, times, especially during this time of the summer, you know, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, um, where there are not enough stalls and you can't get all the customers in the in the lot. As you and would. do you use uh, the parking lot for seasonal? Uh, uh, Fitchburg does not. Yeah. That I'm aware of. They they use every parking stall they have. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then I'm gonna open up the public hearing. Kevin, you got the forms? <coughs> I have a, a, it's hard to read the name, Mike Schmidt, opposed, Mike wants to speak. 731 Westbrook Trail. I'd like to speak to the parking. I see they're taking the stalls away. I was very concerned about driving into Wanakee. Can't even see the store. All you see is parking lot from every direction. And I'd like to know how they're gonna I'd like to see it, how they're going to make it look from highway queue with all the screaming because I don't think he can, the store's so far away, I don't think you can see the store. I was just his parking lot across the street. I believe that's the food's lower the road, their parking lot. So you could, so it was less visible to the public. And I'm not sure how they're going to screen it, but it's ungodly. I'm, that's my concern. Thank you. Yeah, and I was there. No, no, she was on item one. Oh, is it? Are you registered to speak? Yes. Oh, go ahead. I is Ann Lewandowski, 103 West 3rd Street. Um, I share Mike's concern about the visual impact coming into the village. I, when I look at the entryways to the village, I really like coming from the east because there are not a lot of parking lots actually coming from the west here, even on 19. It feels a little bit more strip mall -y. And I would really hate for such high quality development that's taken place on Q to be sort of disturbed by the sea of asphalt. Um, and when I look at parking lots, often the vegetation and trees take a really long time to grow up and turn into nice shelter, nice visual disruption. So I really hope that that's addressed because this is a really important and expensive project. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? That's all I have. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Because I'm that person that lets this. Please state your name and. Brian Bauman. I represent Festival Foods. And like I said, we do not object at all to the forward or high B project. But I referenced a letter that went up earlier today to members of the Planning Commission and Joint Planning Commission. Um, one concern that we've had is um, a number of the staff comments that were raised, uh, the IV project were raised on our project as well, and it was made clear to us we need to comply with all of those, um, submit revised renderings, uh, work with staff. We'll be going to our, we've gone to three tech reviews now um, to try to incorporate all that feedback, and we believe that um, approving this project uh, conditionally or otherwise until 
they have complied with those requirements, the same requ requirements that we were asked to make sure that we complied with. We think that's inappropriate. Uh, again, not objecting to the merits of the project whatsoever, um, but simply, uh, I mean, I believe John referenced if they would comply with landscaping, they would comply with parking, but we were required to show that, demonstrate that, allow the village staff to comment on that, raise questions, make sure it worked correctly, make sure geometry worked correctly, uh, make sure that we were in compliance with all the ordinances, whether it was architectural based, parking, landscaping, those sorts of things, show on a colored plan, um, and give those diagrams and, and submit those for, again, for not only staff comp, but for public comment as well. We think that would be the appropriate process here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, then I'm gonna close the public hearing. Brian? So you have um, two documents <clears throat> before you and, and one of them is the conditional use permit document that relates to, um, we, were, we conditionally approved the general development plan for the development for which Hy-Vee is a part. And in that general development plan makes clear that because the building is gonna exceed 50,000 square feet, a conditional use permit is required for it as part of the planned unit development district. So that's what that document is. Then we have, um, a specific implementation plan. So that's the kind of the more detailed zoning document <coughs> that follows the general development plan. And the the document that's in your packet, it's on page 58, is 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 mirrors the the SIP that we approved for um, Dean Clinic a number of years back. And it it's Basically what we do is we take some language from the general development plan and then there's a number of plans that Hy-Vee has submitted to us and we need, me and Kevin and probably Kent and, and maybe Ed and Jason need to incorporate the references to those plans. Um, so they're not in there right now, but that's the process that we used before and I think we feel comfortable using it tonight. Um, I, I think that both of the documents are going to be potentially impacted by some of the statements that are made by hy V, including, you know, dropping the parking stalls to a certain number and also comments that Ed and Jason have made that are part of your packet that, that I'll let them comment on. Um, but I would say that I have, there's nothing that I've heard tonight that, you know, from a legal standpoint would prevent you from, you know, essentially conditionally approving these documents and identifying for us the changes that, that we'd want to make. And I've made a few notes as we've gone through. Um, to, to, a, I, I'm going to let, Jason and Ed addressed the, the comments from the public regarding the parking and the landscaping and things of that nature. When, when it comes to the procedure, I respectfully disagree with the position that Festival Foods has taken here. Um, the simplest way I can put this is, the reason why Festival is on in June as opposed to earlier than that is, you don't take an SIP forward until the general development plan has at least been conditionally approved. And the general development plan for the project on the west side of Q is on the agenda for the May 20th village board meeting. Um, I mean, it just as a little bit of background, what's on that agenda includes a development agreement, land division, and zoning. And our practice at the village of Wanakee has always been for a project of this size that you <coughs> take zoning, land division, and a development agreement to the village board at the same time. You don't take them piecemeal. And so, the SIP for festival necessarily had to wait until June. Um, I, my expectation would, you know, I've seen some documents related to next Monday's board meeting. I think we'll be in a position to act on the Kilkenny West project um, the same way that we acted on the forward development group project, which was conditional approvals. And then staff is directed to, you know, work on some technical issues. We'll probably be in that position on Monday also, but just like we asked hy V to wait until the general development plan for the forward development group project was approved, we've asked Festival Foods to wait for the GDP. So I think we've treated both, both projects, you know, our goal the entire time mm -hmm. is to pr treat both projects the same way, and I think we've done that. So procedurally, I think the village is in good shape. Um, I, I'm certainly willing to answer any questions you might have about the documents that are in your packet, but I think it may be more appropriate for Ed and or Jason to comment on some of their comments that were in the packet at this time. Okay. Before they go, I, you know, the, a couple items that I had written down that I think we need some clarification from the Planning Commission. 
Um, Jason put together a meta memo indicating that the parking is in excess of what we would, what our ordinance would require. And uh, High V has agreed to reduce it, in, in essence, by about half of what uh, uh, Jason recommended. I think that's the question for the Planning Commission, is, is that in terms of a compromise acceptable to the Planning Commission of reducing the, the, number, the amount of parking by 60 stalls? I certainly would support 72. that. What's it? 72. 72. 72. Versus what? Um, I had I'll suggested 117 fewer. Which takes us to a total of what? Uh, my suggestion had been a cap of 258. Um, uh, and so I think the difference there, I think we're talking about. 150. It's 405, 410. 410. Is in the submittal. One page says 405, one page says 410. There's a discrepancy there. Yeah. <coughs> Big change. So, to be clear, they, they said 338 was your total. Right. That we're going to. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. So, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do the math. The math doesn't seem straight. So, three, so about 60. It's fuzzy roughly to me right 60, now. We'll roughly just 60, say. 60 cars, 70 cars, 72. 72. <laughs> Give us the stalls per thousand you're going to and what you want them to do so the original submittal is 6.9 per thousand the ordinance is five per thousand and they're proposing 5.5 I was uh, sorry I was doing the math um, uh, just for the grocery store uh, but we've been talking about tonight really with both of the buildings included uh, and they're talking about removing spaces near both of the buildings so um, we've got about 61,710 square feet for the two combined um, and we're talking <coughs> about 338 spaces total right. Right. Uh, for the two combined um, So that's 5.5 .5 per thousand, um, which doesn't equate uh, directly to the village of standard because the village of standard is set up on a based on a net square footage, so the customer square footage, not the total building footprint. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't actually have that information as to the interior layout. I haven't seen that to tell you what that really is. Um, I think it's easier to just talk about the gross square footage this store to other stores uh, of theirs um, <coughs> the total of 338 uh, if you're familiar with the um, the Fitchburg store if you've been there um, that store by my estimate has uh, 349 spaces so it would have a uh, similar amount of spaces uh, that store is an 81,000 square foot store so it's a larger store um, they did indicate some concern that that site, that parking lot, uh, does occasionally <coughs> max out. Uh, so I guess in this case we would be, they're looking to avoid that risk and have the flexibility to do seasonal sales and things in the parking lot uh, that they don't really have there. So it's certainly uh, much less outside the norm as, as proposed, um, uh, as, as suggested today, the revised version. Than, <coughs> than, it, than it was in the packet. Um. So, and, and I, this is obviously not impacting any analysis that I'm providing to you, but I, Fitchburg High V is where I shop. And I will concur with the fact that there are not all, not, I would not say frequently, but infrequently there are times when the parking lot is so full that it is difficult to find a parking spot, particularly if you're driving a vehicle that's bigger than a Prius. So. So what are we requiring Festival to do? Are we allowing them to do the same thing that we're allowing high v in parking? Or did they're, we tell they're, them? They're meeting less? code. They're meeting code, and I, I couldn't cite for you what the. I can't did they know, want more what, stalls what the rate is? Them or, I mean, I just want to make sure. I do not want to vote on something where we're treating people differently. I, 
I'm going to vote no until I know for sure. And you guys guarantee that we're treating everybody the same. We don't have staff comments yet on their submission because they're not the process they're not going to be on until next month. So if you're asking if we're going to treat them the same, yes, the answer is we would treat them Even the same. Even on the conditional use where they said that we have to, they have to have everything answered before they submit it. Is this the same? <coughs> Here. I, I think that that's a little bit of a, there was a lot of. Uh, yes or no. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not a yes or no answer. It's a. Let me give you an example. So their general development plan, their CSM, all that is on the board agenda for Monday night. And they will not satisfy all the conditions that we've laid out because I know I've seen the report that Strand put together in several pages. On the GDP. On the GDP. Well, it's not the GDP. It's the GDP, the CSM, and the developer's agreement. So we'll have to conditionally approve that. It's not we're going you're not going to be approving a final document on Monday night for their project is uh, either. But is there not a conditional use also required in both of these? There will be. The there, there will be. be and so, so I'm addressing that specifically and you are going to say something. Were you going to respond to? No, I was going to say and I think uh, Brian stated that all my comments that were shared with festival and with IV were the same comments and if you read them you'll actually see some similarity. Um, and even though we're not being asked to review things until further down the road, I have to say that they were very accommodating. And as I marked up drawings in preliminary, they, they were very accommodating and they updated their drawings. The concern I've had and the frustration I've had is I'm reviewing drawings that are dated May 2018. So to review architectural drawings and, and the discussion of the parking, I, I'm uncomfortable knowing where I'm at in terms of the actual response. So I have a question, John. So with the 338 stalls, you said roughly 75 to 100 employees yes. will be working at a time. So roughly 20, 25% of your stalls are, are employees. And with this store, the potential of a store across the street, I'm assuming you have other stores that that's the situation where you have another competing store very re relatively close, whether it's Target or whatever, um, that's right there. <coughs> Do those stores typically have this ratio of 5-5 five, five, or is it a smaller ratio or a larger ratio? This is the ratio that we've been doing ever since we started operating restaurants of our grocery stores. Um, prior to that, we could get away with a 5 to 1,000 ratio, but since this store will have a restaurant with approximately 130 seats, or 100, yeah, 130 seats in it. Um, that five for five is a nice blended ratio between a typical 10 per thousand that you'd need for a restaurant and the five per thousand that you'd need for the grocery store. The 5.5 works out so that you don't have conflicts with parking between restaurant patrons and um, all the other things that are going on at the grocery store. So it, you've just learned through experience that that's, that's the ratio you need in order for the parking lot to really work and the traffic flow to really work well. Well, that helps a lot for me, that explanation. So, uh, questions or comments from the rest of you? you? Talked about seasonal sales. I mean, how many events do you plan to have in the parking lot? And that's going to be the gateway to the city, and how are they displayed? Yeah. Well, um, obviously, it's, it would be the, it's up to the individual store director. Um, typically, they like to have a garden center um, from when it's warm enough to actually put plants out. So uh, late May or late April through maybe the first part of June would be a garden center out there. That would be the only seasonal sale that you'd see out in the parking lot. The rest would be along the front of the store. Um, pumpkins. Um, I'm trying to think of other. Moms. <laughs> I mean, Moms, it, it's just just anything that you know is related to the time of year. We'll it's subject to what's allowable per ordinance as well. So, yeah. you know, they may want to look at selling Christmas trees or John mentioned pumpkins. And um, yeah. so it's seasonal type items, but the focus there is that they're on the front of the store uh, and our, you know, we've got an expansive walkway in front of the store. And then, you know, we have, you can kind of speak to the structures that we build for the, for the garden center. Yeah, the, gar the garden center is a, 
has a commercial enclosure around it, so it's a nice looking fence, and the, the structures that go up are temporary, but they're galvanized steel with the nice the coverings on it, a uh, little bit of branding. The plants are kept under the hoop houses or out in the parking lot, depending on their tolerance for the sun and the heat. And of course, this is all done by permit. The Correct. city allows it. Sure. Okay. So any others, Brad? Um, the okay. easement in front, what, what's the distance of that grass easement from the store to the Woodland Drive? It's, uh, right now it's currently the entire width of the, on that drawing you're seeing up there, it's from the back of the curb all the way to the sidewalk on Highway Q. What, what, how do you know how wide it is? There's plans uh, for that at all or that's just going to be green space? Uh, it looks like it's 40 feet from the property line, so 38.2 roughly. It was required for the oh, Bill Dunlop and JSD. It was required because there's this deep storm sewer that runs and picks up a flow from the west side and routes it around the site. <coughs> so it's it's wide enough so that they can go in and excavate down and, and not disturb either the sidewalk or the parking lot. And that's why the landscaping there is a little bit sparse in that area and why deleting the parking spaces that are proposed will be able to fill in some landscaping there because those won't be in the easement. Okay. Susan? Can I ask why you don't have updated plans? May 20th, I'm wearing, those are over a year, about a year old. Why yeah. would you not have updated plans? Well, we, this, this has been a, it's been a long project, um, a long process that we've been going through. And last year we were ready we, we had got, met with staff several times and had hashed out right. um, all the details on the architectural plans. It was our understanding uh, that those were in an acceptable state when we left things off. And I just My concern would be how different are today's plans from May 20th so that staff really knows what they're looking at. That's, those are old. <laughs> the well, building elevation plans are the ones that he's referencing. The site plans have been updated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to be but current, to match the, the development that's been worked on here lately. The site plan was updated on 628 a month later, and then since then, all the work that's been done has been on the development yeah. itself, and the, basically everything that goes on around the site, uh, including, you know, Ed had brought up uh, street trees, those are in those development plans. so. Most of the work had been done on the site, yeah. uh, outside of the high B site, and there wasn't hasn't been much of a change other than the ones we've talked about today. Yeah. I guess I should staff be sure that staff feels they know what they're looking at. I mean, because I don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm confused. I'm a little bit confused. We actually have sent the updated drawings to Ed uh, so that he can make sure that he yeah. had the current versions. To be clear, there are there are updates made to the site plan. The building elevations were complete back when we submitted in May of so 2018. So recommended changes to the building in so May if you're using those the ones. <coughs> right. You're, the you're, you're uh, keeping with the plan that you had versus. Our understanding was that the building elevations in May of 2018 were acceptable and we kept them the same. The plans, uh, there were uh, a lot of staff comments that we addressed in the interim, and we've updated those plans. So everything you have in front of you is current. But the building elevations. But the building elevations just have a date of 5 2018. But the building elevation that did not meet is the. Which side is that? They're stating that the east side uh, can't receive any kind of um, grid or awning embellishment because Where of the, the trucks. Dock is. Because of the trucks. We have a document here. This is from June 1st, 2018. It, what I heard uh, it, is that um, Ed is saying that that elevation is not meeting what you had requested, and you have a reason for that, which you gave us earlier. I just want to make sure we're clear on that. And, and it was agreed that, in general, the architecture was satisfactory. Uh, that, 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 that was in 2018, mm -hmm. in June. I heard different from Ed. That's why I'm no, at the planning commission it. level. <laughs> huh? At the planning commission level, it was yeah. acceptable, but not to staff. That's actually Brian. Oh, it's Brian Wallace, our newest person. <laughs> Any comments or? 
<laughs> I know you're trying to catch up with everything. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You talked. We talked about the, the main store. What about the C store? As far as there's anything concerning there. On the <coughs> That's actually probably the most resolved in terms of entryways. Uh, quite a dramatic difference in the building. <coughs> the Starbucks is a darker colored masonry product, and it's as you can see, looking at the rendering, there's a totally different scale that you're dealing with. It's uh, it's easy to react to the convenience store. It's the big it's the big building and the two long elevations that are the challenge. It's all right, and then on the parking uh, with the 5.5. So I know like Fitchburg has the restaurant in it as well, although I don't think that's how big is that one? No, it's it's comparable is what you're planning here. It would actually be bigger than this one. Does the east side and west side have that as well? They have uh, casual dining. They have what's called Marquee Express. A little bit different format. <coughs> Does like, and I know you mentioned that Fitchburg is at capacity in the parking lot. At, I think that was at 4.3, wasn't it? 4.5, yeah. 4.3 stalls. So I just, I guess I would just comment on the 5.5 if there was a way to assess that a little closer to what staff had recommended. Not seeing where that might come from, but please take that into consideration. Come to an agreement or a consensus with, with staff. I don't really have any other questions. Well, it's it's our it's our sorry. Oh, go ahead. It's our understanding that the five per thousand square foot uh, requirement is a, a minimum requirement. Those are the number of off street parking stalls that you have to have in order to keep the problems off of the public streets. There's nothing about a maximum in the ordinance. Which is why we went as high as we did originally, but we're willing to fill it back to the 5.5 um, in order well, to satisfy the city. Can I, I'll defer to staff on that. One of the things you mentioned, though, is that from some of the sales or seasonal events that you'll have, but then you only really talked about one event that was going to take up space in the parking lot. Everything else is going to be at the building. So, um, so that, and then the landscape density, especially on the back side of the building, and then what we can do along the front, along Highway Q, I think would be important. Chris, any comments? Uh, to kind of pick on the parking a little bit again, um, you mentioned 75 to 100 employees at any given time. Is that how it is in Fitchburg as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got nothing? Got nothing? No. Right. Look that That hasn't already been addressed. A lot of times. Yeah, yeah nothing. Okay. I, I would agree. I don't. Everything's been addressed that we, that I would have a concern about. How do we, how do we, Ed to your or Jason, <coughs> one, the comments from the audience in regards to the parking lot out front as an entry point. They're going to have more space to do some things. What are you going to recommend out there? Well, uh, the question I had is that uh, <clears throat> you're taking parking away from the north side of the building that you say is employee parking. Uh, the question I have is why are you not keeping that parking and taking the equivalent away on that north lane that's facing the detention pond? It's the furthest distance to walk to your front door. So what's so important about keeping that parking? Visibility. Um, first in mind to the customer's eye, That's they're, they're going to park at that far corner first. So probably not first, but uh, customers will want to know when they see a parking lot, they'll at least they, they'll just drive on by if there's the perception that there's no place to park. But the parking at the entrance to the left, I see that as well. And I would park there and just walk along the face of the building instead of crossing diagonally across a huge parking lot. And if you got rid of those, that would help dramatically reduce the asphalt as your gateway experience. <coughs> I'm just sharing observations. Can you grab the pointer? Can you grab the pointer? Trying to keep from making value judgments. <laughs> Bring it to Ed. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. He's saying things, and I'm having a hard time following so, where you're at. Sorry, uh, Chris. So, so to reduce the parking amount. The suggestion was to remove some parking from here. 
And a question I have is why wouldn't you get as much, get rid of as much of this parking? I guess it's a bad idea. I'll be quiet. Just got rid of it. <laughs> just got rid of it. So my comment is that if I park here, look at that distance and through a sea of parking. Whereas if I park here, I just walk down the side of the building and in the front door. And that allows me to get at least whatever that distance is times 20 feet deep of asphalt. We know that a customer will park in front of the store and walk to the front door rather than park behind the store and walk to the front door. And if you go to the plans, it's about the same distance from well, well, the this corner is there. It's a lot shorter than that. That's a, that's a perspective. <laughs> it's getting rid of the parking to the rear of the building, not the parking to the rear, not the front. Okay. How many employee parking stalls are there on that side? <clears throat> Do you have the employee parking is just wherever the store director decides they want to. How many stalls are on that one side? Uh, I think there's. From your parking. I just know that the high plan was just not 28. And then if you eliminate the row, you only have how many? Right. What's that? You'll have 28 when you eliminate the row, or you'll have. Uh, the. So, do you have a the point? Who has the point? Who has got Oh, here. <laughs> to the site plan, it'll be much easier to see where he's proposing to eliminate. Good suggestion. Huh? Um, no, these are Ed's comments. So after <coughs> Ed's comments, we work through, you might even flip one more to where the landscaping is at so you can well, see. That's, that, that's actually the parking alone is good. Uh, right here, we're, we're proposing to eliminate these. Okay. Keep these. Eliminating all of these. We're eliminating these good. five here just to eliminate any conflicts with the Starbucks drive through and people walking mm -hmm. that way. Uh, we're eliminating this water back here. That'll give us some more room to do a little more landscaping and screen some of that uh, backside of the store. And, and that's 72 parking stalls when you take all those out. And then that 18 feet removed up here. Gives us all this room to extend the landscaping plan along there and provide some interest and uh, buffer the, the parking lot a little bit. So you'll see you'll see over the top of the hedgerow to the store. So the store will be the, the focal point rather than the, the pavement. Up here, I think uh, we like to keep those. Those are highly visible. Those are good from our perspective. Those are good, uh, highly visible customer parking stalls. We, we prefer to keep those. Plus, you have uh, almost 100 feet of distance between the, those stalls and uh, uh, Woodland Drive. Is that is that adequately? No, I, I I I appreciate the removal of the western row. I just know that the hypotenuse is longer than the side of a triangle, so the distance is typically longer. But we don't have to get into that level of detail. <laughs> Okay. And what are those red marks? Are those islands you're putting in? Or <coughs> those, are, those are actually, this is, uh, these are Ed's comments. Yeah, those were um, the request that in our <coughs> ordinance we have a request that <coughs> no more than 12 spaces uh, in a row, they should be interrupted with some, uh, uh, between 6 and 12 within that module that a planted island be incorporated for so a canopy. So in addition to the removal of the stalls that were talked about, you're going to have those islands, those additional islands? We can we can move the islands around so that we're flagging it at a 12. Well, right now they don't exist, and and if they meet the 1.5, there'll be extra plant material that could fill those islands. Yeah. Generally, Brian, the, the Planning Commission has given us some discretion in terms of those islands because there's usually some practical reasons why they become difficult for snow plowing so we allow them to make up some of the landscaping in other areas and, and reduce some of the islands or make some of the islands bigger or compromise in terms of you know location and size and number of them in order to accommodate the you know the, the really the snow plowing of the, of, the, of the parking lot but you need to know that I've had the same ask for both uh, site development yeah. What's, uh, if I could ask, what is the timeline, uh, if this were to be conditionally approved, what is the timeline on staff and IV coming to consensus on the conditions? 
<coughs> well, what, uh, my understanding is we're agreeing to the conditions today, and then we'll work out revised plans to turn into staff. Well, we'll have to on that. Uh, well, we're we can typically turn it, so you know, if they submit and have some discussions, we can typically turn that in a week or two. Can you show me where your cart racks are in the parking lot? Yeah. I have a request or comment in regards <laughs> to this. The uh, cart racks are these. So the, the stalls that are next to them, yeah. both sides, is there a way that we can widen those stalls? Because those are the, that, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is the car when it comes up there to open your door with the width of the park. Is your, you don't open your door on the park cart thing every single time. So is there a way for us to expand it by a foot or so? For those particular stalls, um, if we had to eliminate some, I'd like to eliminate it that way. Right. <laughs> Actually, I, I I had did years of work on cart corral design for hy V, so I can help you with that question. <laughs> our, our, cart, yeah, our, cart corrals, perfect, then. <laughs> our cart corrals are essentially the same width as a car, um, so they fit in the, the nine foot stall, and they leave roughly uh, nine inches on either side free. So you have nine inches. So you have a foot and a half with between a, a really big pickup truck and the cart corrals. Um, they're made of, it's basically a, a steel fencing material and has a galvanized interior. They're, they're pretty nice looking. Um, I'm not disagreeing that they're going to be nice and looking. We really haven't, since we've introduced those cart corrals, we really haven't had problems with people banging their doors and um, having problems like you're, you're mentioning. <laughs> I've, <coughs> I've had that challenge. That's why I'm asking. I'm yeah. not saying no, I understand. Can't, can't <coughs> I've, I've been there as well. Uh, but we we think we've solved that problem with the the product that we put in our lots. Go ahead. So I'm I'm confused again. So I think that what you said is that if we approve tonight, you know exactly what whatever we have before us is done. There's no changes with staff. Is that true? We have a recommended motion. If you want to hear it. Well, we're going to have a couple. And. Um, <laughs> One of my questions, the audience has mentioned concern over the sea of asphalt, which I've always, I'm concerned about too because you didn't lower the site. It was low, um, so you get to see that. It, can that be addressed with landscaping along the main drag with Arborvita that screen it so you don't have to look at all that so asphalt? This, this area not? here. Yeah. What are we going to have in here? Because it sounded like there was more landscaping that, that's needed grass, to meet that's, the point. That's where that deep storm sewer is located. Okay, so, so we're taking out these cars. So we're taking right? out those parking yeah. stalls. So what are we going to put here? We're going to put. Uh, we'll keep the trees that are there and do uh, a low combination of deciduous and evergreen shrubs along that edge in order to screen the edge of the parking lot. So that when you're driving by <coughs> on queue, you're looking at uh, a base layer of plants. And then if you look above that, you've got the store and, and the plant materials and the islands in the parking lot. Can we do Arbor Vita that are bigger, better screens than bushes? Arbor, Arbor, and Arbor Vita are a little too tall. Um, we'd have security concerns with that, but... Um, From the street? Yeah. yeah. So, so we don't yeah, have, like, hands. massive experience with grocers. We haven't had a new one be built in quite a few times. Quite, quite a long time. And I know <coughs> when this, this was put in, we did have a berm out in front for quite a while here where the trees sat on before we redid the road right now, correct? That's gone now. So we see directly into this. So that's kind of what this is going to be, even a little more exaggerated because it's going to sit a little bit lower. Is that correct? This is going to be up at ground level, I'm assuming. The way, the way the terrain is, are we bringing them all the way up? The advantage you have going southbound is that you're coming up to the light and then you drop back down. So you are approaching it from a lower elevation, which is helpful. What about from the north? That's from the north. When you come from the south, it'll, be, from the south, that's it'll right. be more visible from the south. Which is our corridor, is what I'm, I think that's what the people that made their comments were referring to, is that particular. So from your There's the, the gateway view up there on I, I, I changed it. There's your view from the north northwest. Do we have a view from the other one? If we were down by the sea store the coming up? I don't think we do. No. Yeah. 
my sorry, my reaction when seeing this was that it was kind of a simplified view. It's my understanding that that intersection, this is as if standing in the intersection of Q and Woodland is higher than the parking lot. This doesn't indicate that. And I've been trying to find the right Great. image that shows the the contour lines to explain that. But I wonder if, if the IV team can uh, cite the parking lot it's, elevation. It's, it's going to be sheet C3. We'll have the as compared we'll have to the grading plan. Okay, it's C3. Mm -hmm. Who's got cheaters? 952. Mm -hmm. It's like a scanned image. This is 956 in Q. What page is that? C3. Sheet C3.0. Oh, yeah. So there's a modest drop that I think is, is greater than this implies it's basically flat to my eyes. Because uh, that's easier to yeah. to do the but, illustration, but yeah, we actually had a discussion with the illustrator about that. And it's it's roughly a five foot drop over. Yeah. Almost well, this is easier to do. <laughs> which is it's easier to do, but it's it's possible to do with the elevations. But uh, with a five foot drop over this distance, that that five feet's almost imperceptible. Yeah. Um, if I could, I'd like to offer my own comments about you know, the impact of the of the parking. Uh, uh, at, you know the asphalt and the, the visual impact of that. I think the most effective thing. I mean, there's a, there's a fundamental design decision here that has been cooked into this from the beginning, which is we're going to locate the store to the east end and allow the parking to be on the on the west side. And I, I think there are several uh, good reasons for that decision to have been made. Um, obviously, the retailer likes to see that parking between where most of the vehicle traffic is and where the store is. Um, this part of uh, you know, this whole corridor, yes, the smaller stores that are further, that are closer to the village's edge, further south on Q, are closer to the highway, but still um, there's not a real, there's not a lot of verticality. So it's not like we've established a real urban character and then it's dropping away here. Um, so you've got the parking visible to customers so they can see there's parking available. You're not going to have all that many people walking along queue. We do want that to be possible, but you're, we expect more pedestrian traffic on, um, uh, sorry, the Crestway. 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 Simon Crestway. Crestway. Simon Crestway, thank you. Um, and so the, the distance, you know, the alternative is that we would have maybe had them push the building out to the corner uh, so that the building would be closer to the highway, uh, then it's further from where people are more likely to walk in terms of walking access from Simon Crestway, and then we're also dealing with, we're still having the same conversation about how do we hide and, and deal with the, uh, the service side of the building. So it's kind of tough. It has to be four-sided architecture. The parking's going to go somewhere. What do you do with it to soften that expanse of parking? One is uh, don't overdo the total parking, and we I think we've addressed that. Um, my 5.5, or excuse me, 4.5 uh, that I had suggested was arbitrary, uh, so there's not a you know, specific <coughs> guideline there. It was um, subjective. It was subjective. Thank you, uh, village attorney. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, you know, in part I was asking, implicitly asking the applicant to make their case for what they need and why. And... I'm, I'm comfortable that they're making their case and comparing this, this store to other stores as to why the revised amount is an appropriate amount. I think the other thing you can do with the landscaping, which I think they are doing, is to break up that landscaping with, with the islands and to have trees and landscaping throughout the parking lot. And, and that is something we're doing. Um, with respect to, okay, there's 72 spots going away, where are they? Um, I, I'm not interested in particular in quibbling about that. I tend to agree with Ed that I'd rather take away the ones that are out closer to uh, Q uh, and leave the ones closer to the building. I would just encourage the applicant to uh, consider several things in, in the redesign, and there is going to be some redesign. One is if you've got 75 to 100 employees and you're pushing them to park furthest from the entrance so that the parking is prioritized for customers, if you take away parking on the sides, that pushes them out to the front edges. 
And so having the parking on the sides from per that argument, I think makes more sense than out front, but it would encourage the applicant to think <coughs> about that. The other issue, what now that we've <coughs> gotten the parking spaces down to a little bit more reasonable number, um, we are going to run into a little bit more issue with snow storage at times in the winter. And so as you're revising the parking layout and revising the landscaping uh, to consider where the areas are that you can push snow off without damaging without damaging plants. So just want to be sure that that's <coughs> accounted for. So um, I guess my bottom line is, and I, and I wanted to address the question of, uh, you know, we don't have a maximum. How are we setting a maximum? Um, correct, there is not a maximum. Uh, my my uh, message to you in my memo was to say, hey, this is a conditional use permit process specifically targeted to deal with large box retailers and the various effects of those, visual, ecological, and that gives you the leeway to uh, deal with this this issue if if you want to set a standard or or or, or set a limit. Um, uh, I did go back because you were curious. I did go back and look at the current draft that we have of the festival. Just you know, how does it compare? Uh, it's more in line, a little bit less than the revised version as discussed tonight. So there are there are fewer spots there. So we'd be. Uh, it's, you wouldn't be having an issue of about uh, fairness uh, there. Um, so those are my comments. Okay, Chris, if we could offer a, a recommendation and you guys could have further discussion. Yep. So, I, and, and to, to answer Sue's question, I mean, at a, at a staff level, we have absolutely no interest in, we, we want the same requirements to be applied to both developments and both grocery stores. And so, to the extent that you may say five, you know, you may do the parking that is that is the parking compromise, I'll say, that's been offered. I mean, that same type of compromise would be offered, or that same type of number of stalls would be offered on the opposite side of the street, too. I mean, we do want to make this consistent. It just so happens that these guys are the first ones through the door, and so whatever essentially you would apply to them is also going to be applicable to festival, I mean, from our standpoint. Now, there's, there's two different documents before you, and so there would be two separate motions. The first one deals with the second document in your packet, the, the SIP, and this one's going to be pretty straightforward. It would be motion to approve the SIP with plans approved by the village engineer and village attorney incorporated into the SIP. So if you look at pages 58 and 59 of your packet, again, these were the plans that were, ident that were utilized for the uh, Dean Clinic. The exact same plans may not be used. We may not, for example, have the same perspectives that the Dean Clinic, but the concept would be the same. We, you know, the SIP, first of all, we're saying there's a general development plan that says for this, for this lot, you can have a convenience store and a grocery store, which is obviously what's being proposed. <coughs> then we would look at the plans that they've provided, the most updated ones that village staff has approved. That's why we have that additional approval by the village engineer and village attorney those would be incorporated in there. That would be the recommended motion on the SIP and I think would contemplate whatever, you know, concerns that you may have about the plans because we would have the most updated ones. The conditional use permit. Let's take that one first. Well, well I, I don't want, I, I, I think, I think it's going to be best for you guys. Well, if you want to talk about it, yes, but I wouldn't actually make the motion until you're satisfied with the second document too. So that, but we're fresh on that. Yep. So I wanted to make sure they have an opportunity if you have questions with regards to that. Anyone? You get to which page in the back of that? So what we're saying is we're not, we don't have which the complete, one? We'll you're going to make the final decision, so I don't really beginning. like that all the time. It's something that's complicated. 45 or 54. Um, and the <coughs> one comment, Kevin, you made on the islands, I don't want to go to this parking lot in the future and see not enough islands in terms of breaking up that parking lot because we allow you to be flexible. I know what it's like to plow parking lots. I do a lot of it. I know it's a pain, but it's going to be really important with all this asphalt that that be laid out properly, visually. So, okay. I mean, Any other? You can have discretion, but. And that's a, that's actually Final one of the topics 54. for the conditional yeah. use permit is so what you're getting right discretion. Now. I heard. Yep. Any other comments? Okay. Okay. So then, when you look at the conditional use permit, and this is going to be a little bit more involved. I mean, so if you look at pages 56 and 57 of your packet, this is kind of the form of the conditional use permit that we have been utilizing. 
And we always have this, you know, in this case it's section two, where we have the conditions of the conditional use permit. And so the first one would be the applicant shall construct a grocery store pursuant to the site plan and SIP approved by, and one of the things to keep in mind is because we're in the joint planning area, the action that you take tonight on both the CUP and the SIP is going to be a recommendation to the Joint Plan Commission. Because it is actually the Joint Plan Commission that makes the final action here. So I, I should go back on the SIP. It's going to be motion to recommend the approval of the SIP. Just, but that's a. So then I, I heard six topics that have been kind of discussed in more detail that I think that we would want to incorporate as subsections B, C, D, et cetera. And so I'm going to kind of state my understanding of these, and then I think we might have to confirm on both of them. The first is that for parking, 72 parking stalls would be removed, such that for the grocery store and the convenience store, we would have a total of 338 parking stalls. So that's, that's one. Um, the second would be... And, and I agree with what Jason said. I mean, I know that the applicant at this point in time has identified different spots that it's going to remove um, the parking. And, and I think that you, we might want to give them a little bit of discretion where if they go back to it and if they think that they have a different, there's certain spots where maybe we'd remove it here and not there, that we'd want to allow that. But the one spot that it seems to work really well based on the comments <laughs> from the public is that all of those spots along the west side of the parking lot would be removed. And so then, on, on that, it would be those spots are going to re be removed, and they will add more landscaping subject to final review and approval by the village engineer. So there would, that would be an update to the landscaping plan that's going to acknowledge the fact that those parking, it, at least those parking stalls along the west side are going to be removed. It's going to allow for additional landscaping to be implemented. I think I've heard the applicants say that that's something that they agree with and they're okay with. <coughs> Probably have, allow staff and hy V to work that out with the understanding of, you know, it sounds to me like the plan commission members share some of the same concerns as the public as to the extent that it's appropriate, we want to see more landscaping on that side of the, um, the, 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 the project. Can I clarify that? You said the village engineer approves the landscaping or a landscape architect? Well, I mean... That's correspondence with these guys when we make the... So, yeah. It's okay. through his approval. All right. Yeah. Um, now, I did hear a comment. The third one I had on my list, and I'm not sure what discussion we've had on this, that there was a comment about, and I think Kent may have had it in his uh, document, something about a trash enclosure, and I wasn't sure exactly what was going to be done with that. Um, is that something that you guys... I mean, that's something that also can be done just subject to final review and approval by the village engineer, but I can't recall off the top of my mind what Kent was saying with that. He just wanted some more. We'll, we'll match the architecture of the building and see store. Where is it? Can you guys point out where it's located? Where is it? Uh, it's not on the site plan. Number 80. Right here? It's opposite yeah, right. the convenience store. Well, that's so that's in the parking lot because I'm looking at this drive through. Kevin, can you go to page 80? Has all the markups. So you're saying the uh, enclosure is here? Is this going to be the. No, those are the field things. Yeah. Yeah. Right where the dot is. You know, I, I'm, I keep on thinking about the traffic flow. If that's really going to be a Starbucks and knowing all the people here in this community, how busy that's going to be, and the traffic flow coming through. I watched that Dunkin' Donuts, and it's a hard spot getting in and out of, and it still has a line that is deep, and people are waiting. I know we're trying to push everything through here, but I look at this traffic flow, and one of the first things we're going to see is the back of that sea store, and the islands and the canopy for the gas station, and understanding how cars are going to get in and out of there efficiently. And people do want to have a cup of coffee, and where are they going to park? There's a handful of stalls yeah. and handicap stalls. Let's skip it around there. Mm -hmm. Let's skip it around there. I, just asked I know we're kind of we're here. moving forward here pretty quick, like, but it's, there's it's really like no discussion on he said he'd match the building. that back side of that sea store as well and the big gas islands and the canopy that will go above it. So that's going to be one of the first things you're going to see is standing up those canopy tops and then the car traffic flow. I mean, maybe I'm, you know, I come in from Madison, 
as do many residents. I just offer community. that we have had our engineers at Strand look at the circulation and they did feel comfortable with it. I think Ed's looked at the building to make sure it was a four-sided building and not, you know, just so that the architecture really surrounds the entire building, all four sides, so it's not, you're not looking at a back of a building. And then their, their trash disposal will be in front of the building then? Well, I think Brian's as a condition of approval that the trash enclosure will need to be, be approved by the village engineering and you know, I'll generally consult with these guys next to me. Because they'll share the same trash disposal as the grocery store. Yep. No. No. No, 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 the loading dock has it's another right? enclosure and a com I believe a compactor. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, there's for here somewhere. It's in the right, right, uh, almost. Those, those are the loading docks. There. Okay. Yeah, the trash enclosure area right there for the store. And then uh, trash enclosure for the C store is Go left. to your left. left. To your left, right there. Yeah, right there. It, can I ask a question? Yeah. Will those trash enclosures have doors? <laughs> yes. And are they steel? Steel. They have a they have a pattern to them, so they have okay. a little bit of interest. I think the doors are just as important as the other three sites. <laughs> and then they're going to be that's the gas tanks there, so the semis will come in and fill up those tanks, which will slow up traffic for the drive through is that correct? And they're pumping in and they're uh, refueling? Actually, cars could go one bay farther north and come back down. <coughs> um, here. Yeah, we'll have to go to the first grocery bay. So it, we can control when the fuel uh, folks arrive and, and disembark and, and they won't be welcome that way. It's really comfortable to stop. Um, customers, though, if there is something in the way there, they can always go to this next island and come back down and out. And this has probably the most stacking for a coffee shop um, than any other store I've designed. And it should be handled for the, for the number of customers we typically have at Starbucks. Brad, did that answer your question? What's that? that what you're at? Yeah, how about the canopy for the gas station? How is that going to, you know, visually stick out coming in? <coughs> Same height as the building. Well, it's higher. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's probably what 14 foot clear. 14 foot clear on the other yeah, side. It's a highway it's standard. Foot and the digital marquees will be facing. Q. So you'll see that marquee as soon as you come in for the gas prices. Yeah, we made it clear up front that we want didn't want any separate signage, that they had to incorporate their signage on the building itself. So uh, I, I have another question. I'm told that the signage will be submitted. I have not seen a signage package. Right. Um, so that's another one of the conditional asks. Right. And we typically submit signage packages. If, I mean, we, we're happy to do that, but we typically uh, submit those closer to building permit when all the actual the actual sign packages been put together by the. Yeah, I just want the commission to know that it is yeah. not available at this <laughs> time. So things like the discussion of the display and where it is is part of that discussion. So, none of this will get built. It's not all going to be built at the same time, is it? I mean, you've got a store, you've got a seat store, you've got. They're, they're all be built. In the, <coughs> you're going to build the Starbucks the and the C store and the all at the same time. And we don't have a date yet for that. And you're waiting to do the sign package until right before your building permit. That's kind of risky, isn't that? Uh, is it? it is, but it's also risky to turn in a sign package beforehand and not knowing. Um, all the signs that you may or may not need for a particular store. Our signage sometimes changes. That's yeah. just the way we. Your signage will come. Your signage will come back. Your signage will come, come back. Is this like a traditional high B bay top look? That that is a traditional. Yeah. yeah. So go back to the site plan and as to where that is first. Um, no, 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 don't move yet. Stay. I'm not done yet. So that bay look, is there a way to, it's white, is that correct? 
up on top? Uh, in that this that photo, yes, it's it's white fascia. And what? How how it? I don't like how that looks. I'm just being blunt. Um, that's going to be the first thing that people are going to see in front of the store. And how do we dress that up, Ed? You said you were good. I'm not necessarily good with that. So, or I would strongly encourage consideration for a darker color. It will reflect less light, and it'll be just as. I mean, even if it was matching the cream on the other up at the top, it would be better in my world. But well, and look at look at the the uh, parapet of the Starbucks. It's dark. Uh, lately, we've been shrinking the height of the fascia. That's that white piece that you see going around the top of the canopy. That's been that's been coming down in size in our latest, and it's also been more of a gray to match. Um, I guess yeah, in I this case, it would be the the, the, I, the I, parapet I, over the Starbucks. It's the I'd encourage you to consider a darker color. Okay. Yeah. Is it the only siding that's on the on the site? It's the only. It looks like siding to me. It's uh, probably an aluminum product. Metal it's flashing. So of all the rest of the yeah. buildings, you're seeing aluminum. you're seeing brick. The stucco, the, the stone material, concrete, whatever. Is there a way to do that with that canopy? Do the stone material? Mm -hmm. uh, it's right. heavy. You could I, I'm visioning over in Verona. They have a gas station right next to that restaurant over there. I can't think of the name of it, but it's Casey's. Is that where I'm talking? Uh, Casey's. You know I'm talking about? Yeah. It's a really nice look, and it's. A, it's <coughs> I see this is a spot right here more important almost than the store because you're coming, that's the first thing you're going to see coming from the south. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, again, I think if it was a charcoal gray or a, you know, a dark blue or I, what other, you know, the, I, again, I'll, I'll go to the Starbucks, which is associated with it. You would tie that site together. Okay, you can have it done with metal, you know, aluminum. And I'm not trying and to be I'd difficult. And I'd encourage just, that it be a this is an important factor. Be a flat paint yes. that it not reflect the, the minimum reflection of the of the paint. So it'd be a flat paint. I mean, the thing that's going to make it visible is it's white and it's highly reflective. Is that what you're going for? That is what we have gone for in the past. His description there. It's uh, we've been reflective we and bright. And and is that we, we have been doing RC stores lately with the, the toned down. Yeah. And Flat metal panels on the front. It's a, it's a light gray, and then it has the same center and no red band. Chris, I, I whereas Chad over here, we're concurring, and actually think that part can come back. I mean, the signage is going to come back, so I think that's another small piece that we could have come back. So the canopy. That'll, that's that's a canopy, canopy though. What's it? That's a canopy. Is that the same as signage? <coughs> well, but I guess this, I mean, it, would you all be okay if you worked on, I mean, when you, at some point in time, bring back something different on the gas canopy that would, can similar to the signs, but, I mean, you already know that the sign plan has to be still approved. Yeah, we can, we can revise the canopy. So it's the gas canopy would have to come back to you. Okay. I mean, so that would essentially be a condition of the conditional use permit. One of them is going to be, and, and the applicant has already acknowledged this, the site plan or the sign plan is going to have to come back for review and approval. And that's just because it's not ready yet. And that's with, consistent with the process. And basically, we're just adding the, the gas canopy as part of that. Okay. If you guys are comfortable with that. Unless you guys disagree with me, I'm not. <coughs> yeah, no, I I'm not trying to add all kinds of cost to your project. I'm, I'm not. But I understand. It's that's an important piece it's of this whole thing. The material doesn't have to change. It's a color selection. It's a color issue. Okay. It shouldn't Pretty increase simple. the cost. Okay. And, and the traffic flow is not a problem in the engineer's eyes for Starbucks getting in and out, parking stalls? Correct. I think we had concerns when there was that access right up close to Q, and that's been cleaned up. Um, so I think we've been pretty happy. Anything else, Brian, then that we got? Yep. Yeah, more. <laughs> We got three more. Um, so, and, and, and this is, I'm going to say something, but then I'm, Ed's going to have to be able to comment on this if my understanding is correct. It sounds to me like we're okay with the architecture on the actual grocery store itself, with, with the exception that Ed has identified some concerns with the portion of the store that is facing east, 
And then the applicant tried to address Ed's concerns by saying, because of the, the loading situation with the trucks, for example, the awnings could not be put over there. So instead, they've tried to address the issue with the landscaping on, on that portion of, of the property. And I guess my question for Ed is, did, did I kind of characterize the positions accurately? Yeah, the, the, the primary objection for any kind of overhangs or projections are uh, trucks backing in and hitting any kind of an architectural embellishment, and they're going to compensate with it through the landscape screening is what's being said. Okay, and, and in light of that then, are you, are you okay with kind of the, the end product, which is we'd like to have a little bit more architecture on that side. Sounds like we can't do it for some practical reasons that have been identified. A different solution has, is, has been proposed by the applicant with the landscaping. Is, is that sufficient for you? Is everybody good over here? Can't you put, I thought the festival had like lights up above windows, what do you call it, spandrels with lighting that at the top up high so you don't have to worry about a vehicle. And they made that side, their side of the building look good. Or better, you know, better than a typical back of a building. Was it, did you guys entertain that as a possibility? Uh, you know, we typically don't like to put spandrel glass on the back of the building. It's it's one more thing to maintain. Um, it doesn't really serve any purpose. You can't see it's through it. It's, it's just it's, it's just a it's just an embellishment. It it's really yeah. We also load all the way up, so that is our backroom storage. And in a lot of those stores, we're we're floor to ceiling with different things. If you put glass up there, it becomes a bit more dangerous in the back room. So it's not something that we'd encourage to have in the back room space. We how is your one? Uh, it's three and a half feet back in addition to being covered with evergreen trees. So I mean, it's tall, thick, thickly planted area. Basically you'll be looking at a, if you're on the sidewalk, on. On Simon Crestway, you'll be looking at trees, just an evergreen wall in front of you, not the building. Not going to see the building at all. Not when, it, when, when those trees mature, no, you won't see. The What's the length of that elevation? The uh, east uh, elevation. <coughs> it's it's 300 plus feet. A oh, football field. Are you okay with? I'm okay. Landscape solution. Okay, so Sue, so you're the only one that's not. So. Well, I mean, there's always an architectural solution. It's just, I, I suppose, it's just a matter of cost. Are you okay? It's with the tree yeah. And the, the window, but as you were talking about loading to the top, safety. Well, it doesn't actually have to go through the wall. I worked in those back rooms at one time and I know things can, I'm not going to say what I want to say. I can't because it would, be, you would write it down and I don't want that. So, yeah. all right, <laughs> more. Next. Um, so what we talked about seasonal sales, just the plans for the seasonal sales to be approved by the village engineer. Okay. That, so that, that was number five. <clears throat> um, number six is uh, planted true. I'm just going to say tree islands and parking lots subject to final review and approval by the village engineer. It sounded like there were some comments that Ed had and there's maybe some ability to work through that issue. And so that's, that's per that purpose. And then the last one we've already, number seven, we've already talked about this sign plan and uh, gas pan uh, canopy to be approved by the joint plan commission. And so we're just kind of piggybacking the canopy onto the sign. They don't have to come at the same time if you don't want them to. Um, but that seems to be the one issue that what I've heard definitely you want coming back to you because it seems to be a pretty big issue to the plan commission based on the location of this canopy as you're driving in to the to village. Okay. Okay. So do you guys want me to recap all those? I wrote them all down. Yes, no? No. Okay. Everybody's good on questions. So, um, number five, where you said seasonal sale approvals by approval by the engineers, that every time you want to have something, <coughs> sort of some general guidelines. Well, I mean, I think they can work through that with, with Kevin. I mean, if, I don't think that we have policy or guidelines in the village, even though I, I know think that. We'd want to have them coming in every time they want to have yeah, some really. type of sale. 
I would do as an example for the tree sales that go out here in this parking lot, not on our parking lot, but on the neighboring parking lot that we do sign off on it. Same as the paper wiggly, we do sign off on these, or somebody has a volleyball court set up, we sign off on that. It's just done administratively. Just to make sure they're not gonna have, they're not gonna use up the entire parking lot. It's not gonna cause visibility issues in terms of traffic. We do look at it on a, <coughs> on a case by case and pretty much all of them. Okay. I'll ask my one last question. This is either Ed or Jason, I'm not sure who. The trees and the plantings, what's required when they're put in? Are we talking a sapling? Uh, or are we talking, I mean, what, what meets our, because I'm just saying this, this, this is a concern of people if we have you know, plants that are this big to start with, they're not gonna really do anything for 10 years. Yeah. In the we have requirements as far as the like size. two-inch caliper, I think. Our trees are yeah. two to two-and-a-half-inch caliper, which that's means they'll be about 15, 12 to 15 feet tall when they're planted. That's <laughs> typically what's been done. Okay, I'm just, do we, does it state it somewhere, though? It's uh, stated it's, in the landscape. It's stated in the landscape. landscape. Yeah, okay. it's in your... No, no, but I, you're referring to the point requirements, okay. uh, the caliper size. That's what he's asking. Yep. Susan, so, I just wanted to go back to the site plan as to where the canopy is and what I'm, I'm thinking about is lighting and what is going to be built across and around it. Is there any residential, multifamily that's going to look out their front window and see a big uh, canopy for a gas station? That's a dentist question. Well, it's going to be commercial on the... Where's the site? Yeah. It's going to be commercial on the <coughs> southern half of Sarah Lane. And then obviously it's going to be commercial oh, on point. the other side of Q. Point. Pointer. 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 I got a pointer. It's all commercial. The boss. So this is commercial. That's going to be commercial. Where's the canopy on there? You don't really see it much. Let's see. The canopy's going to be here. That doesn't point. show up. It's on white. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because the top. Okay. No, I see. It. <laughs> no, you're not. It's just not there. <laughs> It's I mean, if you commercial. when you go if you go to over the here. east yeah, side of, of Simon Crestway, there could potentially be some multifamily over there, not single family, multifamily, but multi-story, multi-family. That's part of this whole site, yeah. so that would be right. So do we have keep in mind, it ought to be full cutoff lighting. Uh, so do we have lighting metrics in. and everything? So don't we look at lighting metrics? We, we do, but I'm not sure if it's been fully no. submitted. Have we not looked at that. Uh, I think Kent. I think Kent has. There's a uh, our requirement is that they cannot have any uh, spillage off the site. Well, I want to make sure that we've looked at lighting metrics, particularly with that canopy, because that would be typical in a site plan like this. Yeah, I, I have, just didn't see it. That's I haven't I seen or heard about uh, specific information on that, and I would concur. So and I, th I would say it's not back. just about the effect on residential, but as you come into the yeah, village. Right. Is, is there going to be a huge, you know, light bomb there that that's the only thing you can see is that versus versus the, you know, the grocery store and other things around it. So it should be adequate without being over bright. All right. So that, can we add that as? Sure. It, it should be night sky compliant. But, but not just that. Yeah. Not just full cutoff. It needs to be not too bright. Okay. We, Let's say too. I understand that. I don't think our, our photometric plan did actually show the campy lights on sound it. Like there was a and well there's they're LED sharp cut off so we're, we're typically mm -hmm. at 20 foot candles which is higher than the parking lot but you quickly lose that light. I just want to make sure staff has reviewed this and they know what is being built. We'll verify that. Hours of operation. That. I, hours so. of operation. Huh? That's, that's, hours that's of on. Operation matter here. So Hours of operation, does that come into play here? Is this a 24 hour store? Something that we can include in the SIP. Okay. So, not to be repetitive, but when all these things are resolved, I would like to request a set of record drawings that are all dated current. So, we have that as a reference to check the as built. Before a final sign off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Right. So, that we have everything that we've agreed to, one set of drawings with the same date. <laughs> well, I think that's effectively what we're doing with the SIP when we incorporate the plan documents. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. what Ed is saying is very important. We need a record. Okay. 
Brian, can you read off what, what the motion potentially is going to be here with this one? Well, it, so, the, so with the conditional use permit, it would be motion to approve the conditional use permit with the seven additional conditions uh, added. And I'll just run through them quick here. And um, applicants shall remove 72 stalls, uh, parking stalls, so that there will be 338 parking stalls for the grocery store and convenience store. That's number one. Um, applicant will add additional landscaping on the west side of the parking lot subject to final review and approval by village engineer. Um, the trash enclosure is subject to final review and approval by the, by the village engineer. I think what we've heard here is we just want it to be uh, architecturally the same as the convenience store, if that's possible, um, with, and the doors are important. Um, uh, landscaping on the east side of the property, um, to take the place of any architectural changes on the east side of the building. I think they already have that as part of their plan. Um, uh, plans for seasonal sales approved by village engineer, that's number five. Um, number six is uh, tree islands and parking uh, lot subject to final review and approval by village engineer. And number seven is uh, sign plan and gas canopy uh, uh, to be approved by the Joint Plan Commission. And then we understand on that last one, I guess the question would be, do you need the lighting to come back to you? Or I can, you know, I can tell you, like, w within, <coughs> within the SIP, one of the plans that Dean had provided was the site photometric plan. And so if you're comfortable, you know, that they're going to have to provide a, a lighting plan as part of the SIP that is satisfactory essentially to Kevin, and I know Kevin's going to rely on Ed and, and Jason when actually, it comes to... Actually, Kent. He, oh, Kent. I know Kent's already reviewed the photometric plan, but we'll verify that. Mm -hmm. Should we I have this way, the Ed, Ed's part two here at the end? And with another condition? And what's, what's that? Oh, that all... The records sign, all the records be updated? Yes. All, all plans, uh, all final plans be provided to Village with updated dates, is that? Yep. Okay. So record set. So that would be number eight. Okay, so before I ask for a motion, do you have any concerns with meeting any of the things that we just went over on IV side? No? Okay. So do we have somebody that's um, willing to make the motion? To the extent that you all need a reason to make the motion, I think first of all, we're comfortable as a staff level with these conditions. Village has executed a development agreement with Forward Development Group that says for all of the public improvements on this side of the road to be completed by December 31st of this year, all, all approvals for the project, including this approval, need to be issued by the Village by May 15th, which is a few days from now. So. I'm not telling you that you have to uh, conditionally approve the CUP tonight, but I, I think you do need to know that if it is not if it is not conditionally approved, that we're going to need to go back to the drawing board with the developer on the development agreements and talk about the public improvements. All right, I am going to make the motion to conditionally approve the CUP with the eight things that were discussed by Brian. So I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Chris Thomas. Any other comments? Okay, then I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so we have six, six one. Can I explain that? I should have said it. Right. And, and remember to be clear that the, the, your motion was to, re I mean, you're making a recommendation to the Joint Plan Commission. It's correct. This is not the final body. And then on the SIP, the, the other document, it's, the, the recommended motion is mo motion to recommend approval of the SIP to the Joint Plan Commission with plans approved uh, by <coughs> village engineer and village attorney incorporated into the SIP. No. no. Can hmm? I explain my no? Oh, you can, yes. 
it's not because I don't support a project. It's that I can't believe we are approving something this significant with all these conditions and not knowing all the detail. I think the public would require that, and I can. It's just so much. It's a. It, it's just too much. Too many conditions. Too much detail that I think we should have had done. So that's my point. Okay. And if there and I, for me, if we don't make the public improvements, we don't make them. This is more important because this will be here a long time. Okay, so uh, thank you. All right, so, so the second motion we're ready for? This, yeah, the second motion is the second document, and again, it would be uh, recommended motion is motion to recommend approval of the SIP to the Joint Plan Commission with the plans approved by the village engineer and village en attorney incorporated <coughs> into the SIP. Okay, do we have someone to make that motion? Motion by Brian Mouch. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Brian Wallace. Any other comments? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So 6 1 Sue dissenting. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Moving on. Thank you. Next, we've got discuss and take action on final plan and specific <coughs> implementation plan for Golden Ponds addition to Westbridge. The public hearing was held at the last Planning Commission meeting on March 11, 2019. Um, we had uh, asked them to resolve a number of issues in terms of flooding and stormwater control, uh, which they've done to the, to the staff's satisfaction. Um, we're in a position to recommend approval. Uh, subject to uh, be a, just see, recommend approval of the Golden Ponds SIP and final plat to the village board. Okay. Subject to all staff comments resolved to the satisfaction of the village engineer. Just the just the one thing I would say is oh yeah the final plat it's it's a recommended approval to the village board. The SIP is something that ends you with you. So you and and I can tell you that the the SIP is consistent with the residential general development plan that has. Uh, been approved for the project um, and, and so I don't see any issues with approving the SIP because the SIP doesn't go to the village board it, it just goes to you okay uh, any comments from our members or questions for any staff I think the the biggest thing in the in the public's eyes with regards to this and I think that uh, Beerbecker uh, has addressed it very well is where the water is going to go, how the water is going to flow. Um, so I, th I think they've done an excellent job of, of guaranteeing and assuring both me and Mr. Tierney <laughs> to make sure that we don't have issues with the housing over there. So those are my comments. I don't know if anybody else has any others. Then I'd look for a motion. And can, can I just modify the recommended motion? Would you motion? Motion to approve the Golden Ponds SIP and to recommend approval of the final plat to the village board, subject to all staff comments resolved to the satisfaction of the village engineer. So the one that's on the paper. Well, it's a little, it's tweaked just a little bit because again, you are actually approving the SIP as opposed to recommending approval for it. Okay. Okay. Do we have that motion? Motion to take action with the final plat for the SIP, recommended as stated for the Golden Ponds addition to Westbridge. Okay, motion by Brad Zeman. Is that okay? And so just to be clear, you guys are recommending approval of the final plat to the village board and you're approving the SIP for the, de for the development. Okay. Correct. Okay, so motion by Brad Zeman. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Susan Springman. Okay, any other comments? Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let's have it. Next, we've got discuss and take action on site plan for McDonald's exterior remodel at 651 West Main Street. It's hard to believe, but it's been over 20 years since McDonald's has come into the village. They are planning to upgrade the exterior of their building, and I did have Ed take a look <coughs> at it, and we are recommending approval. Is there anyone here? Anybody from McDonald's here? No. Ed? Uh, there, it's basically there it's a huge maintenance thing that they're taking on they're basically 
renewing the paint, the parapet, the windows, the secondary signage entrance, welcome. Uh, they're modifying the shape of the drive up window. Right now it's sloped, it'll be a flat roof. And so they're modernizing it to match a lot of their other facilities. So the footprint, the entries, the windows, the parking lot, nothing's changing uh, except for ADA access is being improved. So it's really uh, an upgrade of the facility within its current footprint, it's getting new skin mm -hmm. and, and better uh, ADA friendly. <coughs> Do you know if this is essentially what they just did in uh, Windsor on 19? Uh, I'm not familiar with that one, but I'm seeing it happen everywhere. Okay. And, and the signage, if you look at the, the submittal, um, the signage is ghosted over what's being removed. It's about the same size, except the lighting will be more e efficient. So it'll be internalized just the way we see it today. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the site plan as presented. Second by Chris Thomas. Second. Second by Joseph Zuberger. Any other comments? Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next, we've got update on festival food specific implementation plan. I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, that the applicant may want to give you an update. Good evening. I'm Brian Bauman, uh, Senior Vice President and General Counsel for Festival yeah, Foods. This is our site engineer, Grant Dukach, doing a great job so, so far for us. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update here um, based on the feedback that we got from staff uh, and from the last meeting with the Planning Commission and from some residents on our third submittal that we made. Our fourth submittal will be going in this Friday. Um, and a couple of the, the points I wanted to draw to, uh, a big one is um, from very early in the process uh, after we submitted our, our full drawings, it was clear, it was made clear to us from staff of the need to comply with uh, section 133-19 <coughs> sub 4 of the village ordinances and that relates to landmark buildings. And that ordinance in essence requires that the building constructed, if it's a landmark building, the building constructed in Wanakee needs to be architecturally unique from any other building that the applicant has. And so what we did based on that feedback from, from staff was we created a completely unique design for Wanakee. And the plant, that does not exist anywhere else in our other 32 stores, uh, and it will not be replicated either. So it was made very clear to us that that was uh, a very important ordinance to the village, to the staff, uh, to the board, and um, it did require some additional engineering costs, and it will add uh, some significant costs to the construction ultimately. But we recognized how important that was to the village, and we complied with it. So I would just like to point that out that something we're very proud of, and we do realize that that was a requirement and an ordinance that had to be complied with in order for us to get approval. Secondly, um, the revised submittals are going to include uh, back of store renderings that will actually show physically the berming and landscaping back there. So visually it will show what the, the height elevations uh, of those landscape efforts will look like. Um, we also worked, um, spent some time in tech review uh, and worked with the staff here to make sure that we implemented landscape islands every 12 stalls. I believe that that was brought up in the discussion with, um, with Hy-Vee and, um, you know, originally our design uh, did not include that for some of the reasons that were referenced, snow plowing and things like that. But again, it was stressed to us how important compliance with that was by the village and we made that change and that will be shown on our submittals that will be going in on Friday. Um, finally, we, or in addition, we, uh, we revised the landscape plan uh, in detail to show the 1.5 landscape uh, point multiplier for retail buildings over 50,000 square feet. Again, that's to comply with a specific village ordinance, 133-19 sub 3. So that will be shown clearly on our submittal that will go in on Friday. And finally, um, I think a couple of folks mentioned this. Uh, we undertook some additional efforts to further tuck our parking, if you will, to lower that parking field as, it, as you see it from the road. 
uh, that kind of focuses on the, it's intended to focus on the village's <coughs> desire to avoid that sea of asphalt look. Uh, and I think what it does is it also limits the visual and ecological impacts of, of having acres and acres of blacktop. So those are some things that we're very proud of. Um, we appreciate the feedback that we got from staff and we wanted to make sure that our submittals and our submissions and our renderings that go in on Friday do fully comply with those ordinances of the village. Do you have any questions? And otherwise I'll let Grant give a couple of uh, additional comments. Any, any questions, folks? Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. And again, we're excited and we're looking forward to uh, 2020 opening. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, again, Grant Dukas with Excel Engineering. I uh, don't have much to discuss tonight, but one of the main items we wanted to, to be here tonight was just to update. We gave presentations uh, last month. We wanted to provide you with all those documents. So what you have in front of you is the presentation materials that were that was presented a month ago. Again, just wanted to get that in front of you to show you, you know, what what Commitment Festival has had to the project, working with staff, and, and what we've done moving forward. So with that, really don't need to touch on the site uh, in, in any greater detail, but just wanted to open it up to the plan commission, staff, if there's any questions, we're here to answer them, we're happy. Uh, we're working with, with, uh, with staff and the commission throughout the process, and we want to deliver that product that, that meets your expectations. <coughs> So with that, we can open up to any questions. And, uh, if there's any other discussion, we'd be, we're here, we're happy to, uh, to discuss. You know, one question I always had, and you know, how is the residential on the other side of Holiday Drive compatible with this commercial development? So I'm just raising it at the, you know, something for you guys to think about when you're considering approving this. At, is there any additional information that you want to see as part of the packet to address that issue. And ju just as a discussion point, and, and we, we can talk about it, but we do have updated renderings uh, for the west west facade of the building. I believe, Kevin, if you, if you scroll down. We did provide those with the anticipated berming and proposed landscaping. So we, I, we do have a good visual representation of what that, that building and development will look like from the west. It was, can you scroll up with the renderings? <coughs> yeah, I don't know which way to go here. Page 136, 137. There should be actual perspectives or renderings. <coughs> Further up? Down. Yeah. Of course, seeing the back of the building on that one. So I would offer that okay. uh, this has been one of my concerns all along. Are we managing that? <coughs> I would have preferred to have seen a more detailed plan for the entire property, including the residential. Um, I, one of the things that if you look at, um, Kevin, if you could zoom in on one of these that has the contour lines, um, I think 138 is the sheet in the packet that I was looking at. Um, uh, to get a sense, this is a very rolling site, and to try to understand the relationships between the various parts of the site, um, what well, well, Kevin's trying to do that, yeah. So I, this kind of helps. I think what's happening there is that the site is falling away to the west from the road. Um, and so um, I, I think for compatibility, for me, that helps. It means that the, the views are going to be more easily obstructed by the landscaping along the back of that building. Um, as you move south along the site on the west side of the new road, then it goes up. Um, but then you're not looking at the back of the building that's further south than the building, I think, a little more so. So, If I could, uh, I'd like to weigh in on this. There's two things when these gentlemen came to me. I've never been so impressed in my life, the staff, of what these people accomplished. And believe me, they put a lot of energy and they brought a lot of stuff to the 
on a key staff. He was incredible. There's two things when I talked with these folks. You've got to have a tremendous store. Don't go in for any tip money right up front. And I said, you need to lower it. These were, these were th three things that I thought they'd pick up and leave. And this gentleman right there, it was incredible how they came back. They lowered the store so that the residential community we have made a huge investment in that's west of here will not be impacted. I, I just want to say whatever happens here, these people did a great job. Do you want to let everybody know who you were? <laughs> I'm kidding. That's all done, done, done. For those people who don't know. Okay. 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 That's it. That's it. Thank you, everybody. It's okay. Discussion of public input process for the former public library site. In the packet, there was a memo that I thought uh, Jason put together that did a nice job of summarizing you know, the potential uses that could be on that site that would be consistent with the comprehensive plan. What, uh, what I was suggesting that we do is, is as a first step is uh, direct staff to go get input from the adjacent neighborhood. And I think they even put a... Let's, let's see. They made it in the packet or not, but... Um, here is a drawing that shows the, the amount of neighborhood that we would initially contact, either uh, have a meeting. I'm even thinking that actually getting written comments might be more useful in terms of, of summarizing of what they think of some of the, the uses that, that I think were outlined in, in Jason's memo. And then after getting the, the, the feedback from the adjacent neighborhood, bring it back to you and then you guys can decide what type of public input you want to take from there. If that's reasonable, that's what I that's what I suggested as a motion. Direct staff to proceed with gathering information from the adjacent neighborhood and report back to the Planning Commission. Can you describe your outreach? I can't tell from that map. <coughs> Is that just the yellow area? Yes, it would be the yellow. Where's the, um, I, I'm sorry, the library is The library is the red. The triangle. The triangle. It's the orange. The peach. Orange. The. And that whole area <coughs> down below, there aren't any houses the there, school. right? That's a school site, correct. The school. I don't think that's a very big area. That's the library right there. I would. Uh, Maybe expand. Thank you, sir. Are there others? I didn't know who would. What other ones would you like to include? I'm, I don't have a problem including more. I'm going to say that I would prefer it go right down to Main Street. Any yeah. houses that are on Main Street coming up the street, because that's going to be where the traffic is going to go. Is past those homes. So from like South, um, South Street library properties. site up to South Main Street, Street up to Main. So South Street properties blocks, yeah. between uh, Century and South Street. Century, not Century. No. Well, you can say Main the whole North South Main Street, Street. Kevin. Main Street, um, where South Street comes out into Main Street. Yeah, I'm, I'm following. Yeah, I'm just saying what's the east and west uh, boundaries would be <coughs> Century Avenue and. South Street or? No, I think just right along South Street. Yeah, just, oh, just South Street. Right along South Street, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, this is that line South Street. Street. Well, where's Knight's Bridge? So how far, how far off of, of South Street? A uh, house or two or? I, I just think the houses that are on the street. That's, that's my take. Just the ones on the street? The ones that are on the okay, street. Okay, that have a, <coughs> a side yard or a front yard on South Street. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I wouldn't have a problem with that block, the whole block off South Street on both sides, just people driving around and just at cover your bases. No, or, I mean, we're not saying we can't gather additional information. This is sort of a first look at those that are primarily affected, I guess. Yeah, but I think that people want to move kind of quickly and what they're going to do with that in terms of putting it out for sale. So I hate to go out again, but get it over with well, first time. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the school when school's in, they know there's no left turns on the South Street, correct? Well, yes, it's restricted so during certain times certain of the Certain hours, day. morning and afternoon. So we'd probably want to go down the street where everybody's going to to turn left. That same street. Follow you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And I think we could come to fish. 
Is that where it is fish? That's where he, how's everybody feel about that? Opportunity. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where all the traffic is, the traffic patterns are where it would be to go to this location. I think Knightsbridge is the same thing. I think Knightsbridge is going to be a busy, I do too. busy road coming up That's there. That's a busy one now, yeah. People come down to Vision. Oh, we better there. make sure we include 8th as well. Simon Crestway. So, I mean, uh, we could probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, it so. doesn't hurt to ask more people than fewer people, is well, my, my yeah. philosophy on this. Larger sample? Yeah. Sample form, attend. Yeah, I think, yeah, that makes All right, sense. so all the corridors coming in, uh, we'll pick up. Yeah. So I think you could do all of South, South Street, all the way up to. So we'll do South Street to Main Street. We'll do A Street over to Q, Knightsbridge over to Division Street. South Street down to Simon Crestway. That's where it will stop. And what about uh, you said something about Fifth Street? Do you want to include the Fifth Street because that's where the, you know, that's where the left-hand turners go. Fifth or Fish? Fish. Fish. Yeah. I think that makes sense. We may have to have that meeting in a different place. <laughs> well, I was thinking of, of starting with just written comments. I think you get a. I think we've got a better response. I'm saying when we have a discussion on it, though, we probably need to. Oh, at, at some point you're meeting. going to. You're going to have to I don't think people are going to understand open meeting. The yeah. use yeah. issue, yeah. unless you can speak to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. We good then? Moving on. <coughs> Kevin. Yes. Do you, do you need a motion. Do you need a motion or anything? Um, Discussion. Discussion. Do you have your direction? I have my direction. I'm okay. Sure. Then let's move on. Proposed amendment to the zoning ordinances. We're proposing two different uh, amendments to our zoning code. One is the, the parking standards. Um, and we had talked about that probably a, a year ago and made some other changes to the zoning code. We, we postponed action on the, the parking standards. It's uh, time to revisit that. Um, secondly, <coughs> there's uh, some revisions to the code ordinance related to signage that are necessary. I've had discussions with Jason about making those changes. What I'm looking to do is, is get authorization to proceed with those. I think we'll come back with a more formal proposals and, and timeline at the next meeting if you, if you tell me to do so. Well, do you want that? The, the, the document in your packet, I think there was a public comment on that. Oh, yeah. That that was included, I think, because part of that addressed uh, about a year ago from now some of the parking issues. But to the, to the comment that was made, you know, the stuff, to the extent that when we come forward with mod proposed modifications or ideas regarding the parking standards and the sign regulations, that there would be a updated and detailed um, document similar to the one that's in your packet right now that was provided as part of the zoning update that we did last year but this document would address specifically the parking standards the the sign ordinance and then to the extent that we have any other minor what would be considered minor changes because sometimes if you're making some major changes to the zoning code if you got a few things that are minor that you can piggyback as part of the public hearing process and the, the ordinance amendment so that when we send it to municode.com everything can get updated at the same time all of that would be addressed in that type of dot future document okay everybody comfortable with that yep. can i one can i mention something on parking so i know um, we as developers always ask for less parking because of the cost and I have a continual debate with people about this issue and one concern I have here in Wanakee is that if a multifamily doesn't provide enough parking it spills out into the street and we don't <coughs> want it spilling out into the neighborhoods because we do not have this the permitting process that for instance Madison has where you have to have a permit or you can't park on that street because the residents are the priority and I don't know if I see us ever doing that because it's a real staff intensive process so I think whatever we do here we have to be very careful about overloading your streets because there's the possibility that a project doesn't provide enough parking because it's a nightmare 
for snow plowing, anesthetics, and everything else. So we have to be very careful about it. I don't can't tell you the solution, but I can tell you the problem. And I know everybody thinks people aren't going to have cars, and I disagree. I mean, they're going to be cars, even if you're not driving them. They're still roaming around. And uh, so that's, I don't know if this, what we're proposing would preclude that or what, but we have to be, I think you just have to be really, even if someone doesn't take their car out every day, it parks somewhere because people go places. If I may, I, I don't think that we're looking to be <clears throat> especially progressive or cutting edge as compared to other communities in the region. Um, I, more so to come into uh, kind of status quo norm with other communities in the region. What your ordinance doesn't do is have any nuance to adjust for the number of bedrooms in a unit. And I think that's the main thing the we look at. Bedrooms is what's important, is right. to Is to have it allowed to have that nuance. And I agree with that. I just want to make sure that we're careful when we're in single family neighborhoods that things don't spill out into those neighborhoods and create a problem. So somehow making sure that's always looked at. So I'll come back to bite you. Agreed. Okay, so anything else you guys need for direction? Good? I don't think so, Rick. No, that's it. Okay, then we just have our report on Wadley Westport. Number one, we've already addressed. Number two, initial consultation, lot line adjustment, and rezone effort behind you. Kevin, do we need to send Westport? Yeah, you know, that is, you know, Tyler, 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 Tyler K. It doesn't have any impact on the village. We defer to Westport on that issue. <coughs> Well, I might disagree a little bit that K might have some impacts just from a traffic perspective for some of the Wanakee residents as they come from Middleton, but I don't, I don't, I'm assuming that's not going to impact traffic, what they're looking at doing. Well, if you look at the North Mendota Parkway, it's supposed to be off alignment during, in that section, so it should be, where it's mapped, it should be south of where the current Highway K is. So do we have an issue? My question. I don't what the issue are is that they had to traffic. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going, redoing all that right now. So, hey, look, I didn't look at it. That close, it just seems sure. I thought they're just doing a lot line adjustment. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm asking. Is whatever they're planning to do is it going to cause any issues there? Yeah, all they're doing, uh, Chris, is doing some estate planning. So they're separating out the parcels from the vet clinic so they can. Uh, run a business accordingly so they're not having their residentials intermixed with their with their commercial business so they're not any adding any uh, in terms of use to the property so, so does really it doesn't have an impact, impact on traffic <coughs> certainly does but uh, are they adding or subtracting to it no by this change okay our members do you have any questions no questions okay Great. and then update on festival foods which we already discussed one more motion Motion by Susan to adjourn. Second. Second by Joseph Silberger. Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everyone. Brian, welcome to the committee. <laughs>